Philippians chapter 2. And when you have it, say, I have it. And I still hear some pages turning. Philippians chapter 2. And we want to start reading at verse 5, and we're going to read together. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Bible says in verse 10, as Paul speaks to the Philippian church, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every tongue that says he's not real. The folk that put on Facebook to try to blast the ministry that says Christ ain't real. You gonna bow. Every Muslim. Every Greek, every Muslim, every, every Jew that does not practice modern day Christianity or does not recognize Jesus as Lord, you're going to confess. Every Hebrew Israelite, every Nubic Hebrew, every last one of them, all of them, all of them, the atheist, the wealthy that does not believe in God, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. Since we have come under attack, and I've always been under attack since I've been preaching, I just feel the need to preach since I'm being attacked about preaching about Jesus and make sure, Terrence, we get this one edited real quick and out first thing and put this one on the website because uh, everybody's following us and want to see what we're doing. Since Christ is such such. such under such attack, and since the ministry is under such attack because I preach about Jesus, must be something about that name. So I want to preach from the subject, something about that name, Jesus. You might be seated. Something about that name, Jesus. Something about that name. Something about that name. Rance Allen said something about the name Jesus. But before Rance Allen ever said it, there was something about that name that causes so many emotions, a wide range of emotions, Brother Brandon, from people wanting to kill you to people saying, praise the name of Jesus. Such a wide range of emotions. If you look at Matthew's gospel, chapter 1 and verse 21, the Bible says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. There's salvation in the name of Jesus. There's saving grace in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you something. From Kendrick Lamar all the way to this new black foolish movement, this jailhouse religion where everybody's dogging out the name of Jesus, everything consists by his name. You exist by his name. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. You ever notice that the generic term God, because God could mean Allah, it could mean Yahweh. God could mean Jehovah, it could mean Harry Krishna. God is a generic term. Now, we worship the God of the Bible, Yahweh or Jehovah. That's who we worship, the God of the Bible. But have you ever noticed that people don't get in trouble for saying, I believe in God? Because everybody's God is different. Everybody's God. I serve the God of the universe. I serve the God of my forefathers. I serve this. I serve that. But you get in trouble when you start specifying and start talking about Yahshua Hamashiach. Joshua or Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the one who came to this earth 
to save a wretch like me and you. The one who came to this earth and blessed these folk before they got foolish and started going into other things. Jesus blesses those that believe in him and those that don't. People walking around being deep spiritualism and all this foolishness. Let me tell you something. Christ is such a good God that he died for us while we were in our sins. While you were smoking weed, running women, drinking and clubbing, he died for us. You think I ain't going to talk about Jesus? Just something about that name. See, there's salvation in that name. The whole purpose of him coming was to save that which was lost. Matthew says, you shall have a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. You can't even be saved without recognizing Jesus. You can talk about God all you want. And we need to know which God you're talking about. You can talk all day long. But if Jesus ain't found somewhere in the mix, you ain't even saved. And you're on your way to a sinner's hell. And see, I take offense. Because I was a barber for 25 years, had three barber shops, and guys that went to jail would always come back to me trying to teach me something. But you're in jail. I'm out. God has blessed me. Jesus has blessed me tremendously. But then you want to have conversation with is he real or is he not real? I'm tired of all these jailhouse religions that are some pop-up Johnny-come-lately mess messing with my Jesus. Jesus has been good to me. I take offense to it, preacher. When they start dogging me out and dog my Savior, I take offense to it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm like Peter. When they come to get Peter, when they come to get Jesus, Peter got upset. I, I don't see Christians getting upset anymore. Everybody just saying, let live, and, and you serve your God, and I serve mine. No, all of them are fake. All of them. All of them. Everyone is fake. Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. How's that? For folk getting mad at me talking about Jesus. I am the way, not a way. I am the truth, not a truth. And I am the life, Zoe. And I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. All you young folk, you'll be going to college next year and you've already started experiencing it in school. You have been raised in a holiness church. You know the power of Jesus. Don't you go off to school and get smarter than the preacher. All of it's fake. Ain't none of it real. Ain't no worshiping me within me. You, you, you filthy. As the Bible says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. There ain't nothing in you, not unless the Lord resides in you. All this foolishness. And these folk want to challenge me. And I've been walking with the Lord for 25 years. I will spank them scripturally. When it comes to Jesus Christ, spank them, take them to school, show them a lesson. This little Johnny come lately mess you learn as good as God has been to you. Shame on black folk for acting like Jesus ain't real. Shame on you for buying Kendrick Lamar and all these foolish jokers that don't recognize Jesus as Lord. Oh, I'm mad about it. Oh, I'm mad about it. And you're going to protest me until you shut me up about preaching Jesus? It ain't possible. As long as I preach him, he'll continue to give me power. Because there's power in his name. I just told you there's salvation in his name. Then there's power in his name. Power to cast out a devil in his name. You don't believe me? Look at Mark 38. Let's go to Mark 9 and 38. Mark's gospel 9 and 38. The disciples had something to say to Jesus because they saw some other folk exercising demons in the name of Jesus. And Jesus got on and let them know they're fine. Look at what uh, uh, nine, Mark 9 and 38 says. And John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And he followeth not us. 
and we forbade him because he followeth not us. John thought he was doing the Lord a favor. He says, Lord, he said, there's one casting out demons in your name, but he does not follow us. Look what Jesus said in verse 40. Jesus said, for he that is not against us is on our part. Jesus let him know, even though you might not be here with me, if you are a follower, you have power in my name. His name brings salvation. His name delivers us from sickness and disease. His name has so much power that a demon can't stand before it. I told all the preachers this morning in the ministers class, I said, live right. So that when you confront demons, you have the power to cast them out. Because you're going to see more and more manifestations of demons. The more we talk about it. See, the world over there, that church over there, the big gathering over there, and the other church around the corner where they got the coffee shop, where they got the kids playground on the inside, and, and make you feel good about yourself, there ain't no power in there. And more ministries that start talking about Jesus, the devil's going to manifest himself. And at the power of the name of Jesus, demons flee. Demons flee. Demons flee at the name of Jesus. Then that name blesses us. That name blesses us. Everything all right? That name blesses us. That name is so powerful that you could be going through a situation and the Lord says, if you ask anything in my name, I'll give it to you. Look at John chapter 14. There's a whole lot of distractions going on. John chapter 14. You got it? John chapter 14, starting at verse 13. Jesus says, and whatsoever ye shall ask in what? My name. That will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. What does he say in verse 14? If you shall ask anything in what? In my name, I will do it. This is why the name of Jesus has come under such tremendous attack. Because the devil knows that there's power in that name. The devil knows. Just think about it. You go to work tomorrow, you say, I serve the God of me. Ain't nobody going to say anything to you. Go to work tomorrow, say, I serve the God of the universe. Nobody's going to say anything to you. Go to work tomorrow and say, I serve God Allah. Nobody's going to say nothing to you. Start talking about Jesus, they're ready to write you up. Ain't nobody else's name coming under attack like the name of Jesus. Gospel singers sing so-called gospel songs and omit his name. I say if you omit his name, it ain't gospel. I'm lost without you. Easy to see. Who you lost without? You lost without your boy? Your girl, because I didn't hear you say Jesus. He's not a pronoun. And he also said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. Some of you Christians in here, you got your little jobs. You make your little money. You ain't making no money. Your little six to 100,000 a year, that ain't no money. You think it is. So you get up there and you make sure you do everything you can to be socially accepted and you don't mention his name. Shame on you. Get your little grip. Get your little money. Don't mention his name. But when it's time for you to stand before the Lord, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. He's going to stand right up there and say, you know what? You had nothing to do with me whenever you was on this earth. I don't have nothing to do with you now. Christian folk. Shame of the name of Jesus. I, 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 I've, I've gone from the world all the way to the church. Shamed of Jesus. Shamed of Jesus. Preachers will preach a whole sermon about self-help, but won't mention the name of Jesus. Gospel artists will have a whole album without mentioning the name of Jesus. They can sing with Nicki Minaj. What's that girl's name? Tasha Carr, Kirk Franklin, he down in Fayetteville with a little white beater on. And when he takes his coat off, he's got a romper on. Men don't even wear rompers. You know what a romper is, right? That's a dress. You brothers think it's cute. You look like a girl walking around with rompers on. 
You're like a girl walking around with rompers on. Yeah, somebody just walked in, they, they think I'm wild. Y'all tell them what kind of preacher I am. You walk around with rompers on looking like a sissy. And you up there supposed to be singing gospel. But you won't mention the name of Jesus. And the church has become so soft that we don't even want to mention his name. Even in our services. It's amazing. It's amazing. Something about that name that incites and causes so many different reactions. For one, it's salvation. For one, it's healing from cancer. For another one is hate, vehement hate, to the point you want to kill a person. And you say, I'm going to stop him till he tell the whole so-and-so truth about Jesus. And your voice changed because you got demons. Because you don't like the name of Jesus. A telltale sign in your household, if your children are possessed or not, is if they can even say the name Jesus. You got to make them joke and say Jesus. Why they listen to all this filth and watching all this filth, make sure they can say the name of Jesus. Make sure they ain't being possessed by the devil while you're trying to be socially accepted. You've taken Jesus out your house. That name causes so many problems, yet it blesses so many. Aren't you glad that you know Jesus? I'm glad to know Jesus. I ain't ashamed of him. I tell it wherever I go that I'm blessed because of Jesus. I'm saved because of Jesus. That Jesus came through a virgin and died on Calvary's cross and, is going, and rose again and is going to come back for me. Who wouldn't talk about Jesus? Power in that name of Jesus. Salvation. Power. Deliverance. Blessing. You know, let me teach you young folks something. Mother, the mothers will tell you, you could be aching in your body. You say, Jesus. See, 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 America has turned Jesus into a cuss word. They'll say, Jesus beeping Christ. Jesus, sweet baby Jesus. They, 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 they've, they've belittled the name. Then we, trying to be deep, put what would Jesus do on our wrist? That ain't cool. Jesus ain't your best friend. He ain't your dog. Yo, that's my part of Jesus, my road dog. He's Lord. Yeah. Let me show you in the text. He's Lord. Yeah. Something about that name. Yeah. And churches don't want to talk about it. How can you go to church and talk about self-help for a whole message, Joel Osteen? I ain't heard T.D. Jakes mention Jesus lately. I've heard him do a bunch of self-help mess, but it's all about Jesus. It's all about the power of what Jesus can do. Pastor, you keep saying Jesus. I'm saying it for a reason. Because the world is trying to stop me from saying it. And I believe I'm going to say it a little more. And I'm going to say Jesus. But the older folk will tell you, you could be in a bad situation and call on the name of Jesus. Don't have time to go through a long, deep prayer, but you just say Jesus. And see, there's a difference when we say Jesus. Than when the world cusses on Hollywood and says Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus so and so Christ. Jesus this. Jesus that. Just throwing around that name like it ain't got no power. Nobody gets mad about anybody else but Jesus. Try it tomorrow. Go to work tomorrow. Go to work tomorrow. And talk about God in a generic town. Nobody's going to say anything to you. Start talking about Jesus. You can get written up. But you know he's going to bless you, right? You know in Matthew 5, he said, Blessed are men when they are persecuted and reviled for my name's sake. <laughs> See, I'm willing to suffer. There's a lot of people that are not willing to suffer. They want this smooth, sweet Christianity that just keeps on moving. It doesn't challenge anybody. But you got to suffer some things. We're in the last days. Young folk, I know you got your whole life ahead of you. Football scholarship, basketball scholarship, academic scholarships, this, that, and the other. But you're going to be challenged. There's a reason why your mom and daddy brought you to Victory Temple. You'll never be the same. 
You can go wherever you want. You can go to Israel. You can go to China. You will never be the same because you've been taught all about Jesus. You're going to mess up. You're going to make some mistakes. But you know one thing we put in you is that Jesus is real. He's real. Something about that name Jesus. I'm going to be sounding redundant before I get in my text, but something about that name that can make me happy and make you ready to kill me. Think about that name. Something about that name that can heal me, that can bless me, but cause you want to kill me. People say that's the white man's God. Jesus won't white. I'm going to make somebody mad now. Jesus won't white. Won't nothing over that white. So I ain't talking about no white man's Jesus. I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible. Huh? The Jesus of the Bible that came and lived and died for me and you. Something about that name. Something about that name. In Acts 4 and 12, I want to read something to you. Acts 4 and 12. So I just told you that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. I just told you according to Matthew 1 and 21 that she shall have a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. See, people hate the name of Jesus. And this is what I want to tell everybody. You can't, and I said it earlier, but you really need to understand this. You can't even be saved, not unless you believe in Jesus. You, you, you're not even saved. Well, Pastor, my family raised me in Islam. My family raised me, raised me in Judaism. Uh, the Bible says that you can't even be saved. You can't be a good person. You can't be a person that just doesn't drink, a person that doesn't smoke. You can't be a person that just doesn't cuss and that just doesn't lie. But you got to be saved in his name. Look what Acts says. Acts chapter 4, verse 12 says, Because Peter and John were cast into prison for healing the man over in chapter 3. They healed the man. He was laying at the gate. And he was laying there and he was begging. They said, silver and gold, have we none, but such as we have, give unto you in the name of Jesus, rise up. So he was looking for silver and gold. They didn't have any, but they had the name of Jesus. That should bless somebody in here. Your money might be a little tight. You might not have silver and gold, but you got the name of Jesus. And this man was healed by the name instead of the hospital. So you can have all the money in the world, the best insurance in the world. You go to the hospital, you got the right disease. That can't hit you. But Jesus can. This man here wanted silver and gold. They said, we don't have any. But such as we have, we'll give you. So they gave him Jesus. But how many know that that man was blessed because of Jesus, but then Peter and John suffered because they used the name of Jesus? So Peter heals the lame man. Then Peter preaches and tells them to repent. And then in chapter 4, he's catching it while he's preaching. This is why it's not a new thing for the preacher to be persecuted because he preaches Jesus. Don't you ever think that Pastor Rich is so special that the whole world is coming against him. They've always come against preachers that preach Jesus. They've always thrown him in jail. Or kill them because of preaching Jesus. You, you think this thing is a game? This ain't a game. I told y'all, this is not a game. When, when you can cast out a demon by that name, you don't think a person would want to kill you because of the power in that name? This man walked in his healing. He had been bedridden, couldn't get up, but he came up j jumping and leaping. Y'all can turn it, turn it up a little bit. The mother's getting a little cold. They, they, they came to turn up the air a little bit. Uh, they, 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 this man was healed, and he was leaping and jumping and excited about his healing. So the name Jesus blessed him.
But when the so-called authorities, the religious leaders, saw what Peter had done, Peter kept preaching, kept telling them about the name of Jesus, kept telling them you got to repent in the name of Jesus. Peter got in trouble for healing the man. The man got healed because of Jesus. Peter got in trouble because he preached Jesus and healed the man. But he didn't back off. He didn't do like a lot of preachers, change their message to grow a church. He didn't change his message to get more bodies in seats. But he kept right on preaching Jesus and he got blessed, didn't he? No, he went to jail. See, all these lies that everybody's telling, you give this $1,000 and you turn around and you, you say, Jesus, everything's going to be all right. That ain't necessarily true. Sometimes the persecution gets worse the more you talk about it. It gets worse and worse the more you talk about it. But as long as he has you in the ark of safety, it doesn't matter what people say. Peter kept right on preaching. Him and John are put into jail in Acts chapter 4. <clears throat> but he says something to them in verse 12. He lets them know. Same way Jesus let them know in John 10. Peter lets them know in verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men. Because some of y'all were looking at me funny when I just said you can't even be saved not unless you go through the name of Jesus. I saw you looking at me funny. And this is why I'm reading you the scriptures that were written before you was born, before you were thought of. Some of y'all just so engulfed right now. You just in that word like I'm not in this word. I'm saying this to you so that you understand right now that he's the only way. Pastor, why are you so vehement today? Because somebody threatened my life this week because of the gospel. So I'm just as mad on the side of Jesus as they are. Oh, this thing ain't no game. I depend on Jesus to watch over me. I depend on Jesus to take care of me. I depend on Jesus to keep me because he has a proven track record. <laughs> then I'm going to continue to bless you as long as you stand up, preach the gospel in, a, in, in no funny way, unadulterated gospel. You preach it. And I'll bless you. Peter and John kept right on preaching. Threw them in the jail. Didn't shut them up. Kept right on preaching. And as Peter started preaching, he says in verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is none other name, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Didn't he say it? Yeah, he said it. Yeah, he said it. Yes, he said it. And the only way that you can be saved is through the name of Jesus. In order to be saved, you got to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. You can't even be saved just talking about God. You got to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's the only way that you can be saved. Y'all don't like what I'm telling you. But that's the only way. Uh-huh. Romans chapter 10, starting in verse 13, says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him and who they have not believed? How, how shall they believe in him and who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? But if you back up a little bit, it says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All you little secret Christians out here that don't want to say the name of Jesus, you ain't even saved. You ain't saved until you tell somebody what Jesus has done for you. You can hide all you want. You can say you can't judge my salvation. But the Bible says there's no other name under heaven 
given to men whereby we must be saved. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. You either in or you out. Oh yeah, this is going to sound like some old preaching from 30, 40, 50 years ago, but this is what the world needs. In this day of Joel Osteen and Steve Furtick and all of these guys playing games, it's time for the real preacher to stand up and talk about Jesus. Oh, it's time for the real preacher to mention Jesus in every sermon. If you can't mention him in every sermon, you ain't preached. If his name ain't mentioned in every sermon, you have not taught or preached his word. You've done nothing but self-help. You might as well go to a network marketing meeting and holler and scream because you ain't been to church. If somebody ain't talking about Jesus, that name that has power, that name that's above every name, the preacher has not said anything. Believe it or not, I'm just about ready to go to my seat because I showed you that that name will bless you. I showed you that that name will heal you. I showed you that that name would deliver you. But I also showed you that that name will get you in trouble. Paul and Silas, they were healing and delivering in the name of Jesus. According to Acts, I think chapter 16, the Bible says that Paul and Silas stopped this demon-possessed girl walking around talking about Jesus. They stopped her from saying those things and said that Jesus is Lord. They got in trouble for it. Talked about Jesus and it got them locked up. But how many know that when this name gets you in trouble, the same name that delivers and sets free, the same name that will get you in trouble is the same name that will get you out of trouble. There's nobody like my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's none like him in all the earth. And I'm serving notice. You know where we at? 1,000 Wagstaff. Fuquay Verena. I'm serving notice on everybody around here. You think you're going to stop me from preaching? You got the wrong dude. Because when I look back over my life, and I think of how good Jesus has been to me, I believe that I would rather trust him than be afraid of your threats. You want to boycott? Boycott. You want to stand out there protest? Protest. Of course, you won't do it on our property because we got Jesus and we got power to back up that name. Jesus too. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Y'all don't understand me. He's radical today. Well, that's what's wrong with you. You ain't radical enough. If you were more radical, the devil wouldn't be taking over. If you were more radical, they wouldn't be taking over in school. If you were more radical, they wouldn't have all this racism going on. If you were more radical and stand up and be counted, then some of the stuff that's happening in the world wouldn't happen. But no, you just want to have your Jesus to yourself. Just leave me and Jesus alone. But Jesus called us to tell everybody about him. He called us to tell everybody that I'm still healing. He called us to tell everybody that I'm still delivering. He called you and me to tell everybody that there's still hope. He called us and said, just tell everybody, tell that man with his head down that there's still hope. Tell the crack addict that the 12 steps haven't happened, haven't helped them at all, but there's power in my name. Tell the homosexual that you ain't got to be a sissy no more, that my name will deliver you. Tell the lesbian that she don't have to like women no more, that I'll give her a natural affection for the opposite sex. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, there is. I got to get to my text now. But when I start talking about Jesus, and it seems like my message, preachers, has been all over the place, but there's something about that name there's something about Jesus that you can have your notes right. You can have your studies right. You can be prepared 
scared to go one way but when you start talking about Jesus something about that name there's power in that name there's healing in that name is there anybody sick in here you're feeling bad in your body well you ought to just touch yourself and say Jesus I need you to heal my body is there anybody in here you got some financial problems you need to tell Jesus my money's funny and my change is strange but I heard Lord I heard I heard the preachers say that you will bless my pocket just say Jesus somebody in here you need the Lord to bless you in the courtroom you a young man but you better learn how to say Jesus say Jesus I need you I need you in the courtroom Lord I need you in the doctor's office I need you Lord in my surgery Jesus Jesus I need you Jesus yes I do you better praise the name of Jesus you better give glory to the name of Jesus can't nobody do you like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord I found out a long time ago that once I made Jesus my choice it cost me some things but I'm blessed I'm better than blessed I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation I live for this thing and I'll die for this thing I ain't got time to play no game cause he's been so good he's been so good and if you don't know him you ought to get to know him if you fell out of love with him you ought to fall back in love with him cause Jesus is my savior Jesus is my Lord I know what you're thinking but we're gonna let Jesus have his way in here I know I read you a text but we're gonna let Jesus have his way in here because there's power in that name Jesus 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 I need you Jesus I love you Jesus I worship you Jesus 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 sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb yes he is I'm talking about Jesus I'm talking about my Lord yeah he blessed me yes he did and young lady you had a bad moment last week but Jesus is still standing with his arms open wide saying come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest shout Jesus shout Jesus shout Jesus shout Jesus can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like Jesus I love my wife I love my boys but can't nobody do me like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah shout yeah yeah. I know I had a text I know I had a text I know it's Philippians chapter 2 but I can't get to it because I didn't get past the fact that he saved me I know I need to get to Philippians chapter 2 but I couldn't get past the fact that Jesus healed me I know that I read Philippians chapter 2 but I can't get past the fact that he delivered me took the weed out of my mouth took the drinking out of my soul took the anger from my heart Jesus 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 yeah hallelujah Something about that name.
something about that name. It saved me. It delivered me. But it makes you mad. That lets me know that there's something about that name that lets me know that there's power in that name. That lets me know that while the world is mad, that if we just hold on to Jesus and his unchanging hand, everything is going to be all right. I know some of you been laid off. You didn't know I knew about it, but God will sustain you. Jesus will keep you because all the world is under his control. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows the sickness in your body. He knows the problems that's before you. All you got to do is tell him, say, Jesus, Jesus, I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Can't nobody help me but you. Power in the name. Healing in the name. Lay hands right where you're at on yourself and say, Jesus, I need you to bless me. Lay hands on yourself and say, Jesus, I need you to heal me. Lay hands on yourself and say, Jesus, bring me out. Whoa! Bring me out. He'll do it. Yes, he will. He'll do it. Yes, he will. You ought to give him praise right where you stand. You got room in the aisle to give him praise. I made the pews wide enough for you to praise him even in the pews. You don't have no excuse. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus, Lord of all. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, let's try it again. Somebody ought to be praising Jesus. Pastor, are you trying to make me shout? That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. For saving me. And if you're happy about it, give him glory. If you're excited about it, praise his name.
Because you need to give God praise. I see you struggling with giving God praise. You need to give God praise. You need to give God praise. Everybody in here, you need to give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. I'm not talking about shouting, but just give God praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. all over this place. Give him praise all over this building. Give him praise all over this place. Let me tell you something. You better thank God like I am that he has blessed this place. Has carried the same spirit from 300 Rogers Street to over here. That was a refreshing from the Lord. I wanted to go one way but it's something about that name. Something about that name. I'll pick that back up a little later on, but it's something about that name. But the Lord spoke to me and said, while we were praising the Lord, whatever you have up before him, really pray in his name. This ain't me being apostolic. This ain't me being none of that. Pray in his name. Because I know some of you saying, but what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm saying what the Bible says. Pray in his name. I don't care what you're dealing with. Some of y'all are dealing with marital problems. Financial problems, sickness in your body, family problems, problems with your children. We have really got to get to prayer. We will have noonday prayer at 12 o'clock Tuesday. Don't let me forget. Please don't y'all let me forget. And I'll be here. We will have prayer Tuesday at 12. We're opening back noonday prayer. I, don't, I call it noonday prayer because my aunts and them used to call that. My grandmother, my grandmother, my aunts and all them used to say noonday prayer. I don't want to call it noonday prayer because it's at noon. But it is noonday prayer, and it is one day, and it's noonday prayer. We start back Tuesday, noon prayer, and we're trying to go from 12 to 1. And I want you to come out. Some of you working jobs, you can just come stick your head in and pray. But the Lord just spoke to me and said, whatever you're dealing with, pray in my name. And he'll do it. Pray in my name, and he'll do it. We've got to really, really pray. Johnson, you're going to be all right. Say the right thing. I'm going to be there with you. Say the right thing. Sister Johnson, everything's going to be all right. The Lord spoke that to me. It's going to be all right. Say the right thing. It's going to be all right. We got to put Jesus on it. We've got to learn to put the blood of Jesus. And I want everything. I want the praise and everything on this recording, on this video. We got we to plead the blood of Jesus over our homes, over our situations. We've got to plead the blood of Jesus. We've got to anoint ourselves with oil. You got your oil needs to be consecrated. And it's representative of the blood of Jesus. Is that thunder? Thank the Lord. The Lord is approving the work with thunder. <laughs> I apologize for y'all. I apologize to y'all today for not dealing with the text. Right. I dealt with tech. I, I, I had enough sense today to listen to the Lord. Just go on with Jesus. Go on with Him. And that's the way I've been letting Him lead me lately. But the altar is open for somebody who does not know 
Jesus. The altar is open. I'm going to tell you what I love seeing right there with you young folk. I saw my man right there, Briley, and I saw my man right there praising the Lord a little bit. I like that. No, you, y'all, y'all were doing that. But they, they were like, no one. Yeah, you ain't nothing wrong with praising the Lord. Praise him. Ain't nothing wrong with praising him. I like what I see right in there, young folk. I thank God for y'all. I'm praying for y'all because the devil's after you. And all the stuff that I dealt with growing up, y'all got way more to deal with. I'm praying for you. But every last one of you, you young folk, don't let nobody fool you.